In this section we're going to be talking about custom widget interaction and what to do if widgets don't initially provide the functionality that you're looking for. First let's talk about overriding events and functions. If you go into the examples, custom widget interaction, overriding events folder, there's a levels and a UI folder. Open up the level and then open up the widget in the UI menu. Now in here you can see that we have a canvas which we've changed the visibility from non-hit testable to visible. Now normally a canvas doesn't do anything, it's just a panel. It doesn't afford you any functionality, you can't assign events to it. But if we press play in our level, nothing shows up, but when we press the mouse button, mouse button clicked. Now, how did we do that? Well, that's where we can override events within a widget. Let's take a look at the graph. So here you can see that we have a new mouse event called on mouse button down. Now, how did we create this function? In the functions section here, you can see there's an override dropdown. If I press this, you can see there's all of these different functions that we can override. You have everything from on drag events, to on key up and down events, to on mouse events, to on touch events, and many other things in between. So if we choose one of those, in this case on mouse button down, we're going to be overriding what happens when the mouse button gets clicked down. In this case, when this happens, when the mouse button is pressed, we're printing a string called mouse button clicked. Now this return node is important to talk about as well because we have two options here, handled or unhandled. Now basically what that means is if you've handled this event, then it's not going to trickle down to any other widgets that may or may not be underneath this widget. It's going to consume this mouse click. So all that's going to happen is what happens on this particular event. So when I click on this, if I have another widget that has mouse click functionality underneath, that functionality will not happen if I choose handled. However, if I change it to unhandled, now it will not consume this mouse button click. So when I click on this, if there's another widget with mouse click functionality underneath, that functionality will happen also. Now some function overrides will bubble through to the widgets that are underneath it and some will not and we can see what some of those are by hovering over and you can see that on mouse button up the event is bubbled on mouse enter the event is not bubbled and what that means is is that even if you return unhandled for this particular event it still will not bubble through to other widgets underneath whereas a button up will bubble through if you use unhandled as the return so let's take a look at that. So here we have our overriding events widget. And I'm going to add this overriding events button to the canvas. I'm going to center it and change its side to a little bit bigger here. The designer, it just has a single image here that's also visible. And we're overriding this on mouse button down to print a string just as before only this string says another click. Okay, now I'm gonna change this one to unhandled and then go back to this main widget and I'm gonna make sure that this one is unhandled as well and we're gonna compile and we're gonna press play. So now when I press outside of this image you can see that it says mouse button clicked but when I press in the image it says mouse button clicked and another click. It does both. But now let's go back to our button, and instead of unhandled, let's switch it to handled and compile. Now when I press play, on the canvas it still says mouse button clicked, but when I press on the image, all that shows up is another click. It has consumed that mouse input by that image.